would be okay if this was the new CONCACAF Champions League theme. Sadly, it's not. It's the theme to the soccer down here, CONCACAF Champions League preview for 2021. My name's Jason Longshore. Let's dig into each of the eight matchups in the round of 16. A little bit about each of the clubs, a little bit about how they got here, a little bit of their CONCACAF Champions League history, some key players to watch for each side, and so on and so forth. The schedule is also very important. It starts on Tuesday. Feels like this has snuck up on us just a little bit, but the first legs will get started on Tuesday. Second legs of the round of 16 will be the following week. We're going to go in chronological order from the games that are set for this week. First game up on the docket. Tuesday, 6 p.m. at the Estadio Olimpico Metropolitano in San Pedro Sula, Honduras. Marathon and the Portland Timbers. Marathon, also known as El Monstro Verde, the Green Monster, or Las Panzas Verdes, the Green Bellies. Kind of like that one. Club was founded in 1925. They went 8 4 and 2 in the Apertura in Honduras and won Group B. They only conceded 11 goals in 14 matches. They lost in the Apertura final to Olympia 3-0 on aggregate in January. Now, how they got here was through the CONCACAF League. They lost in the quarterfinals to Saprissa 2-0. They had to go into a play-in match. They were drawn with Forge FC of Canada and Marathon won 1-0. Edwin Solano's 18th minute goal was enough to book their spot in the 2021 CONCACAF Champions League. Best performance in the CONCACAF Champions League for Marathon? That's the quarterfinals in 2009-2010 in that edition of the tournament. Their last appearance in the CCL was 2019, where they were knocked out in the round of 16 by Santos Laguna, 11-2 on aggregate. Against MLS opponents, Maraton has two wins over DC United in 2008, another two wins in 2009, a split with Seattle in 2010, one win and one loss, and they lost twice to Seattle in 2012. So overall, five wins and three losses against MLS competition. Recent form has not been as strong for Marathon. 2-3-3 three, and three in the current Clausura season. They've conceded more goals in eight matches in the Clausura than they did in 14 matches in the Apertura. They did bounce back with a win against Platense Football Club 1-0 on Saturday. First half goal from Kevin Hoyos. It's their first league win since February 24th. The key players for this side, I mentioned Edwin Solano, who had the goal that got them here. He has four goals in league play this season, 25-year-old Honduran midfielder. Up top, it will be one or the other, maybe both, of Raiduan Palermo, a 24-year-old Honduran forward, easing into the starting lineup, starting about half of his appearances. He has four goals in league play. And the ageless wonder, Carlos Costley, at 38, has four goals in the league play in nine matches. Kevin Ariaga is the leading scorer in league play with five goals, a 23-year-old Honduran midfielder. He does have 10 yellows as well. Uh, You might want to keep an eye on him because the referees might be doing so. Another player with a large number of yellow cards is Jean-Paul Suazo, a 24-year-old midfielder from Honduras. Nine yellows in 24 appearances. Uh, Young talent breaking through. Luis Vega, 19 years old, Honduran midfielder, has a couple of goals on the year, has been a regular feature for the Marathon lineup. And in goal, it is Denovan Torres, a 31-year-old veteran Honduran goalkeeper who has been the regular throughout league play in 2020-2021. Let's look at Portland coming into this. They joined MLS in 2011. We know the brand goes back to the old North American Soccer League from 1975 to 82. 
It was revived for a team that played in a number of different leagues from 85 to 90, and then again for the USL team that played from 2001 to 2010 and then moved into Major League Soccer. Last season in league play, they went 11, 6, and 6. They finished third in the Western Conference, were knocked out in the first round of the MLS Cup playoffs November 22nd by FC Dallas. A stoppage time goal was conceded to Ricardo Pepe of Dallas. Then they lost 8-7 on penalties, one of the epic penalty shootouts in MLS playoff history. Portland qualified for the CONCACAF Champions League in a very unique way. They won the MLS's back tournament in Orlando last summer. Group F, the three games there counted in the regular season. They won the group with two wins and a draw. The knockout tournament was for the CCL spot and some cash. And they needed penalties to get by Cincinnati in the round of 16. They beat NYCFC 3-1 in the quarterfinals. They defeated Philadelphia 2-1 in the semifinal. And they defeated Orlando 2-1 in the final. Dario Zuparic had that winning goal in the 66th minute to beat the home side Orlando. Third appearance for Portland in the CONCACAF Champions League. The two previous times saw them eliminated in the group stage, 2014 and 2016. 2014, they split two games with Olympia and were knocked out by an away goals tiebreaker by the Hondurans. A home draw with Saprissa in the final match day eliminated them in their last CONCACAF Champions League appearance in 2016. We do know that Jeremy Abobasi is not traveling for the first leg due to a hamstring injury, and we also know that Sebastian Blanco is traveling. He had an ACL injury last season. He's been training most of the preseason with the team. He did make the trip. Key players for the Timbers, you're going to notice a theme here. Goalkeeper Steve Clark, 35 years old, American goalkeeper, played the bulk of the minutes last year. Center back, Larry's Mabiala, 33 years old. French center back was a mainstay on the back line. Diego Chara, 35 years old, the Colombian holding midfielder, covers all the ground. A little bit of a nasty streak when he needs it as well. Central midfielder, attacking midfielder Diego Valeri, 35 years old from Argentina. Blanco, as mentioned before, is back in the group, 33 years old from Argentina. Right winger, another Chara, Jimmy, 30 years old from Colombia. Yeah. That is six players that are very important to the side that are all over the age of 30, and five of them are over the age of 33. Early in the season, maybe not so much of a problem. Later in the year, or at least in the middle, Giovanni Savaresi might have to do some managing of minutes with this side if they are going to be an MLS Cup contender. If they're going to be a CONCACAF Champions League contender, you like to have that veteran experience going into these kinds of games. They've also got Felipe Mora, on a full-time basis now. He was on loan last year. They made the transfer permanent. The 27-year-old Chilean will be up top probably to start this series on Tuesday. Next up on Tuesday, it's Alawalense and Atlanta United, 8 p.m. at the Estadio Alejandro Morera Soto in Alawela, Costa Rica, Second leg will be on April 13th at 6 p.m. at Fifth Third Bank Stadium in Kennesaw. Alawalense, founded in 1919, won their first league title in 1928. They're nicknamed La Liga. They went 12-3-1 in the Apertura season in late 2020, defeating Cartagena in the semifinal, 4-3 on aggregate, and Herediano 2-0 in the final on aggregate to win their 30th league title. They qualified for the CONCACAF Champions League when they won the 2020 edition of the CONCACAF League. Round of 16 win over San Francisco of Panama. 2-0 win in Honduras over Maratón. They needed penalties to get by Olympia of Honduras in the semifinal after a scoreless draw at home and then defeated their Costa Rican rivals Saprissa 3-2 in the final at home. Alex Lopez, or Alex as he was known when he played for the Houston Dynamo, Alex's goal was the difference in that match with Saprissa. Alawalense has won the CONCACAF Champions Cup, the predecessor to the CCL, twice, 1986 and in 2004. They've been runners-up three times, 1971, 1992, 1999. Their last CCL appearance was in the 2014-15 edition. 
They won Group 6. They eliminated Cruz Azul in the process. They defeated D.C. United 6-4 on aggregate to win their quarterfinal matchup. They fell in the semifinals to the Montreal Impact. They were eliminated on away goals. 4-4 aggregate score, away goals, knocked them out at the semifinal stage. Versus Major League Soccer lifetime, Ala Walense has a little bit of experience in this. 6-6-2 overall, going all the way back to 1999 versus Chicago, where they advanced to the final on penalties. They were the runners-up in 1999, but it was a draw through extra time. They went 0-1 against D.C. in 2001. They went 1-1 in 2003 against the New England Revolution, 1-1 in 2004 against San Jose, 2006, won 0 and 1 against the Revs, 1 and 1 in 2011 against the LA Galaxy, 2 and 2 in 2015. It was 1 and 1 with DC and 1 and 1 with Montreal. They are unbeaten in 25 straight matches after Friday night's 1 1 result versus Herediano. 9 0 and 7 in the current Clausura season, coming out of that match, leading the league by eight points. Three wins, three draws since the start of March. Players to watch for Ala Walense. Goalkeeper Leonel Moreira, 30 years old, Costa Rican international. He's got 13 clean sheets in all competitions in 2020 and 2021. Center back Daniel Ariola, a 35-year-old Mexican. 14 matches since arriving on a free from Atlas. He arrived in time for the CONCACAF League semifinals. The veteran, one of the best players ever from Costa Rica, Brian Ruiz, is back with the club that he started at. He's 35 now. He has six goals in 2020-21. He was also part of the Costa Rican national team for recent friendlies. Alex, who we mentioned before, 28 years old from Honduras. Ten assists in all competitions, 33 matches in 2020 and 2021. Right winger who is breaking into the Costa Rican national team, Barlon Sequeira. 22 years old, four goals, six assists, starting to contribute all over the pitch. He can play on the left wing as well, but he'll often be on the right. Up front, they have three options that give you different things. Johan Venegas, 32 years old, 22 goals in 30 matches in all competitions between Saprissa in the Apertura and Alawalense in the Clausura. Marcel Hernandez, 31 years old from Cuba. He's got 24 goals in 34 matches in all competitions. He will not be available for the second leg because he is not allowed to leave the country while he has a court case pending. He will go back to the court in June. It's a case that goes back to 2019 where he is accused of rape of an underage girl. It has been dismissed twice, but it is being appealed again. And while it is pending, he is not allowed to leave the country. The other forward in this trio is Jurgens Montenegro, 20 years old, eight goals in 34 matches in all competitions in 2020 and 2021. On the MLS side, Atlanta United, we know, first season 2017, known as the Five Stripes. 6-13-4 6-13-4 in MLS play in 2020, no playoffs, qualified for the CONCACAF Champions League as the last holders of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup from the 2019 competition. The 2020 tournament was canceled due to the pandemic. Two previous attempts to the CCL reached the quarterfinals each time, lost to eventual champions Monterrey in 2019 and semifinalist Club America in 2020. Atlanta against Costa Rican competition, their first CONCACAF Champions League experience was was with Eritiano. 2019, lost 3-1 in the away leg, won 4-0 at home in Kennesaw. Key players, it's going to be a question, and this is something we talk about all the time on soccer down here, with so many new faces, the key players list could change a lot by the time we get into this competition. Right now, for me, it's goalkeeper Brad Kazan, 36 years old, likely the captain going into this season. Center back Miles Robinson, 24 years old. Um, I think he's an MLS Best 11 candidate. Has to play like he did in 2019 and like he did in the second half of 2020. Ezequiel Barco, a lot of expectations for Barquito at 22 years old now. He will be carrying the load, apparently in the central midfield for Atlanta. Marcelino Moreno. 
will likely be on the left wing at 26 years old, designated player who came in late last season. Got to see him a good bit. He will miss the first leg in Costa Rica due to a red card in the second leg of the quarterfinal last year against Club America. Jurgen Dahm, a lot of CONCACAF Champions League experience from his time with Tigres, 28 years old. Dealt with hamstring issues last year, but was pretty dangerous when he was able to get on the field. And Gabriel Heinze's system seems to be tailor-made for him. And up front, number seven, Joseph Martinez, 27 years old. Haven't seen him in over 12 months. It was the first match of the season last year, MLS season anyway, where his knee was injured, had ACL surgery. Haven't seen him since February 29th of 2020. Looked really good early last season in CONCACAF Champions League. Hoping he can have that kind of form again here. Next up, the late game on Tuesday from the Estadio Olimpico Felix Sanchez in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. RK against Cruz Azul, the Haitian champions against One of the hottest teams in CONCACAF right now. Second leg will be next Tuesday at 10 p.m. from the Estadio Azteca in Mexico City. RK is the current champions of the Haitian League for 2019-2020. They went 9-5-3, had the best record in the regular season of the first half of the League Hatien in 2020-2021. Advanced to the final via penalties after two scoreless draws against A.S. Capuis. They lost in the final to number six seed Violet AC, 5-1 on aggregate. The second half of the season, the current season, is yet to start. They qualified for the CONCACAF Champions League as a semifinalist in the 2020 CONCACAF League. They defeated Jamaica's Waterhouse FC in the round of 16, 3-1, They advanced on penalties after a 1-1 draw versus Forge FC in the quarterfinals. That booked their spot into this tournament. Lost 5-0 to Saprissa in the semifinal. This is their first appearance in the CONCACAF Champions League. That loss to Saprissa on January 22nd was their last official match. They have been playing a few friendlies. Their their latest one was against Baltimore SC in Haiti. A 2-0 win on March 28th. A few players to keep an eye on for Arke. Johnny Pierre-Paul, 21-year-old Haitian forward, scored against Waterhouse in the CONCACAF League. He scored in that friendly on March 28th. Another forward, an 18-year-old from Haiti, Milov Dorvilin. Maybe it's just the name is one reason to keep an eye on him. He scored four goals in a friendly on March 18th. Kervins Joloser is 18 years old from Haiti. He scored the equalizer against Forge FC in the CONCACAF League. Wendy Louis-Jean is 26 years old, a midfielder who scored against Waterhouse, played every minute during the CONCACAF League tournament. Clifford Thomas, 22 years old from Haiti, is a midfielder who was a late addition to Haiti's U23 side in Olympic qualifying. A couple of defenders... Alain Pierre, a 28-year-old from Haiti, started every match at the CONCACAF League. Richard Calixte is 24 years old. He scored the opener against Waterhouse in CONCACAF League play. And goalkeeper, a veteran, 35 years old, Jerry Romont. He started all of the CONCACAF League matches as well. Cruz Azul, La Máquina, Los Cementeros, founded in 1927. They probably don't want to talk about the Apertura, but we will hear 9-6-2. They finished fourth. They defeated Tigres 3-2 on aggregate in the quarterfinals. They won the first leg of the semifinal against Pumas 4-0. Second leg, they lost 4-0, and they went out to the higher seed. It was the latest fracaso for Cruz Azul, the latest capitulation, the latest Cruz Azulieda. It was very, very uh, shocking and poor and also expected from most people who follow Liga MX. They qualified as the leaders of the 2020 Clausura. At the time, the league was suspended due to the pandemic after the March 15th weekend of matches. They're a six-time champion of the CONCACAF Champions Cup or League 1969, 1970, 1971, 1996, 1997, and 2013-14. 
The last time they were in the CCL was last year, where in the round of 16, they easily defeated Portmore United of Jamaica. They lost 2-1 to LAFC in the quarterfinal, and that was over one leg. That was the last series that had not gotten started from the quarterfinals before the pandemic. It was switched to one game and played in Orlando at Exploria Stadium. Versus Haitian teams, Cruz Azul does have a little bit of experience here. 2-0 versus Valencia in 2013 when they went on to win the tournament. This year for Cruz Azul, it started slow. It was two losses straight out of the gates, and everybody thought that debacle from the postseason, the Liguilla, was going to carry over. Well, ever since, they've won every match. 11-2 and two in the current Clausura. They lead Liga MX by two points over Club America after the games this weekend. They lost those first two. They've won 11 in a row. Jonathan Rodriguez's 89th minute goal on Friday night in a 1-0 win at Juarez kept the streak alive. That broke the club's all-time record for consecutive wins. That record dated back to 1971-72. They are one away from the Liga MX record. It's 12 straight. That was set by Leon in 2019 and also Necaxa in 1934-35. Cruz Azul is doing some pretty special things at the moment, and Jonathan Rodriguez is a big part of that with six goals and three assists so far on the season. Roberto Alvarado, a 22-year-old Mexican, three goals, two assists on the right wing. Luis Romo, 25 years old, two goals and five assists from the midfield. Orbelin Pineda, 25 years old from Mexico, a goal, a couple assists. He's creating almost a chance and a half per game. Juan Escobar, a 25-year-old Paraguayan, has a couple of goals from right back and assists. He's very active with 1.6 interceptions per game, 1.5 tackles per game. On the left side, also very active, Jose Rivero, a 28-year-old Uruguayan, 2.3 tackles per game. And the goalkeeper, 40 years old, Jesus Corona, you cannot get rid of him. He keeps bouncing back. He has got a clean sheet in almost half, over half, of Cruz Azul's matches. 11 starts, 6 clean sheets for Corona. Next up, we move to the games taking place on Wednesday. 6 p.m. kickoff at the Estadio Ricardo Saprissa Aima in San Jose, Costa Rica. Saprissa hosting the Philadelphia Union. Second leg will be April 14th, 8 p.m. at Subaru Park in Chester, PA. Saprissa, founded in 1935, known as El Monstro, the monster. 35 league titles, the most in Costa Rican league history. It's been a little rougher for them lately, though. 9-4-3 and three in the 2020 Apertura. They won Group B. They were eliminated in the semifinals of the playoffs by Herediano, 4-1 on aggregate. They were the runners-up of the 2020 CONCACAF League. That is what booked their trip to the 2021 CONCACAF Champions League. They defeated Municipal of Guatemala in the round of 16. Marathon of Honduras in the quarterfinals. And Arke of Haiti, 5-0 in the semifinal. Lost 3-2 to Alawalense in the final. Three CONCACAF Champions Cup slash League titles, 1993, 1995, and 2005. Runners up in the tournament in 2004 and 2008. Their last appearance was last year. Eliminated in the round of 16 by Montreal on away goals. 2-2 on aggregate. The away goals tiebreaker knocked them out. This is Saprissa's eighth straight CONCACAF Champions League appearance. They have extensive experience against MLS, 9-4-9 and versus MLS clubs in CCL play. 0-0-2 against Montreal 2020, but were eliminated. 1-0-1 against Portland in 2016. Split it with Sporting Kansas City 1-1 in 2014. Two wins over Seattle in 2010. 1-1 against Real Salt Lake in 2011. 0-1-1 against Columbus in 2009, 1-0-1 versus D.C. in 2008, also 1-0-1 versus Houston in 2008, 1-0-1 versus the L.A. Galaxy in 2006, two draws with Kansas City in 2005. They won an extra time of the second leg of that one to advance. So far this season for Saprissa, 4-3-8, and eight, eight draws out of 15 matches in Clausura play. Fourth place, six straight without a win. 
the last victory was February 21st versus Arediano. This weekend continued that run. They drew today, Sunday, with Cartagena. They haven't scored more than one goal in a match since February 14th, a 4-2 win versus Limon. The loss of Johan Venegas to Alawalense after the Apertura is sorely felt. He had 15 goals in 16 matches in the Apertura. Key players for Saprissa. We'll start from the back. Aaron Cruz, 29 years old, Costa Rican goalkeeper, 11 clean sheets in all competitions. Kendall Waston is back with Saprissa. Three goals, two assists in the 12 games he's played in the Clausura since joining in January. Another former MLS player, David Guzman, 31 years old, 33 matches over all competitions, 2020 and 2021. Midfielder Marvin Angulo, 34 years old, four goals and 10 assists in all competitions. Mariano Torres, a 33-year-old Argentine midfielder with six goals and three assists in all competitions. They've brought back Christian Bolaños at 36 years old, five goals and two assists in 10 matches since joining in January. Another 36-year-old, Daniel Colindres, seven goals, seven assists in all competitions. Wide player Jimmy Marin, 23 years old. Remember him from Herediano in 2019. Six goals and six assists in all competitions. And up front, it's Ariel Rodriguez, a 31-year-old Costa Rican forward. Five goals and 11 matches in the Clausura since joining from Ho Chi Minh City FC in January. Saprissa's opponents, Philadelphia, this is their first time in the CONCACAF Champions League, first time in international competition. They joined Major League Soccer in 2010, 14, 4, and 5 in the 2020 MLS regular season. Best record across the league. They won the Supporter Shield. That's what booked their ticket to the CONCACAF Champions League. They were upset 2 0 by the New England Revolution in the first round of the MLS Cup playoffs. Changes from last year, no Brendan Aronson, no Mark McKenzie. Stuart Fenley was expected to be part of the mix in the back. He was a late arrival in the training camp. It's mostly been Jack Elliott and Jacob Glessness at center back. Anthony Fontana should be the replacement for Brendan Aronson in Jim Curtin's midfield diamond. There was a concern at one point about Jose Martinez. He had an ankle injury in preseason. Wasn't expected to be too serious. It has slowed him down for a few days. We'll have to see where his fitness is coming into this trip to Costa Rica. Key players to watch for the Union. Andre Blake, the goalkeeper, one of the best in CONCACAF, 30 years old from Jamaica. Left back Kai Wagner, great signing by Ernst Tanner and the Philadelphia front office, 24-year-old German who was essential for them last season and signed a new contract for a couple more years with the Union. Mentioned those center back options. Jack Elliott is a player who came to Philadelphia in the fourth round of the 2017 MLS Super Draft. One of the best fourth round picks in league history. 25 year old Englishman has really become well suited to Jim Curtin's style of play. The midfield, it's a diamond. Talked about Martinez sitting at the base of the diamond. The 26 year old was an all action holding midfielder for the Union that freed up two of their best players in Alejandro Bedoya, the 34-year-old American, had one of his best seasons as a professional last year, and Jamiro Montero, 27 years old, was one of the best players in the league last year. Fontana, 21 years old, will have big shoes to fill from Brendan Aronson, but he's got options up top. Casper Shabilko, one of the most complete forwards in Major League Soccer at 28 years old, And who's going to pair up with him? Will it be Sergio Santos, who made a good partner for him last year quite a bit, 26 years old? Or will it be Corey Burke, who wasn't available for quite a while for the Union, but in the limited minutes he was, he looked great last season. He's been good for them in the past. Is it going to be Burke? Is it going to be Santos with Shabilko? Does Jack DeVries get some time? He's seen a lot of time in preseason so far. How do they find a way to get Ilsenio, the 35-year-old Brazilian, in? more than just as a super sub. Jim Curtin now has a different level of expectation that he has to meet coming off of a supporter shield win. Even in the kind of year 2020 was, having the best record in the regular season does mean something. And Jim Curtin is one of the top young managers in MLS. 
And he's got a team now that people expect big things from. Does that start in the CONCACAF Champions League? We'll find out starting on Wednesday. Next up, Wednesday, 8 p.m. at the Estadio León in Mexico. León hosting Toronto FC. The second leg will be at the Osceola County Stadium in Kissimmee, Florida, on April 14th at 6 p.m. as Toronto FC will be starting their season in Central Florida. We'll get to the Reds in just a second. León, founded in 1944, a couple of their common nicknames, La Fiera, the Wild Beast, or Los Verde Blancos, the Green and Whites. 12-1-4 in the 2020 Apertura, first place finish in the regular season. They had to come from behind in the quarterfinals to defeat Puebla, 3-2 on aggregate. A 2-1 aggregate win over Chivas in the semifinal, and they won the championship over Pumas 3-1 on aggregate. It was their eighth championship in the club's history. Some amazing performances at home in the Ligia to carry them there. They qualified for the 21 CONCACAF Champions League as the second place team in the 2020 Clausura at the time of the league's suspension due to the pandemic. They've already qualified for the 2022 CONCACAF Champions League, by the way, by winning that 2020 Apertura title. Best ever performance in the competition, runners-up in 1993. It was a Final Four tournament held in Guatemala. They finished on goal difference behind Saprissa. Saprissa won the title on the last day. They beat Robin Hood of Suriname 9-1. Leon was only able to draw with Municipal of Guatemala. They were eliminated in the round of 16 last year, losing 3-0 in the second leg at the Bank of California Stadium to LAFC. They won 2-0 at home in the first leg. Amazing performance from LAFC. Everybody thought that Leon had that sealed after their 2-0 win in the first leg. 1-1 one one against LAFC in 2020. They split in 1998 with Colorado as well, and they lost to D.C. United in 1998. So 2-3-0 oh overall against Major League Soccer competition. This season, not as strong for Leon. They are ninth with a match against Toluca set for Sunday night. 4-6-2 record. Three straight unbeaten, though. Two straight wins heading into that Toluca match. A couple players to watch for Leon, center back Jaime Barrero, 26 years old from Colombia, very good passer out of the back, 1.3 interceptions per game, 1.2 tackles per game. Midfielder Fernando Navarro, 31 years old from Mexico, he has a goal, he has an assist this season. Midfielder, 28 years old from Chile, Jean Meneses, one goal, four assists, 1.7 chances created per game. Right winger Angel Mena, 33 years old from Ecuador, four goals on the season, 1.1 chances created per game. And up front, Victor Davila, a 23-year-old forward from Chile. He's got four goals on the year. Toronto, the opposition for Leon. Their first year in MLS was 2007. Last year was a good season for them, 13-5-5, second place in the Eastern Conference behind Philadelphia. Nashville knocked them out in the first round of the postseason on November 24th. They qualified for this CONCACAF Champions League in a unique way. You're, you're going to get used to this with the way 2020 went for all of us. They were the 2020 Canadian Championship finalists. The final has not been held as of yet. It was decided that Toronto would take that associated CCL spot when the final could not be held in time to determine who would earn the spot. Kind of a weird situation. Uh, you could have went the same route that the United States Federation went when the Open Cup winner from the previous year, Atlanta United, got the spot. That's what the Montreal Impact thought, since you didn't have a champion yet for 2020. But this is what the Canadian Federation decided, and Toronto FC gets their opportunity here. Greg Vanny won't be there with them. Greg Vanny led Toronto FC to a ton of success in this competition in 2018. Chris Armas, formerly of the New York Red Bulls, is now in charge of the Reds. That best run ever in CONCACAF Champions League for Toronto was in 2018. It was a 2-0 aggregate win over the Colorado Rapids in the round of 16. 4-4 four, four on aggregate, but advanced on away goals over Tigres in the quarterfinals. 4-2 
over Club America on aggregate in the semifinals. 3-3 on aggregate in the final with Chivas. They lost 4-2 on penalties in Guadalajara after the second leg. 2019 was their last appearance in the CONCACAF Champions League. They were shockingly eliminated in the round of 16 by Los Vikingos Independiente of Panama. 5-1 on aggregate. 4-0 win for Independiente in Panama in the opener. Toronto's history against Mexican clubs, 1-1 against Tigres in 2018, 1-0-1 against Club America in 2018, 1-1 against Chivas in 2018. They lost twice to Santos Laguna in 2012, 0-1-1 against Pumas in 2011, 0-1-1 against Santos Laguna in the 2012 semifinal, and 1-0-1 versus Cruz Azul in 2010. 4, 6, and 4 overall against Liga MX opposition. They will be based in Florida for the first part of the MLS season. That's why the second leg will be played in Kissimmee, Florida. They won their last preseason match 4-2 over the Columbus crew on April 2nd. Josie Altador scored in the first half. Three more in the second, Patrick Mullins, Alro, and Jordan Peruza. Chris Armas said this about what he wants to see from this team this year. Our preference is all-out pressing. We like to make the opposition uncomfortable. We also understand in heat and humidity, maybe defending a lead or due to fatigue, that defending in a mid-block or a low block, that there are certain demands there. That's going to be a big part for us. In heat, in humidity, in fatigue, and lacking fitness at altitude, it gets tested. So we are creating clarity. And then as the coach and the staff, we will manage it with substitutions, maximizing five subs, and pushing the levels physically so that we can endure longer. Key players for Toronto, it starts in the back. Quentin Westberg, 35-year-old goalkeeper, has won the job over the last couple of years. Very steady, very good with his feet and distribution. Chris Mavinga, 29 years old at center back from DR Congo. Omar Gonzalez at center back as well, former U.S. men's national team member. Right back Richie Larea is turning into one of the best right backs in the league. The 26-year-old Canadian is a converted attacker who is very dangerous when he gets forward. Central midfield is this team's strength. You've got Michael Bradley, but you've also got Marky Delgado, 25-year-old American who should be getting attention with the national team, just saying. And 28-year-old Canadian Jonathan Osorio, who they've re-signed in recent years. Alejandro Pozuelo, one of the best players in Major League Soccer at 29 years old from Spain. And up front, Josie Altidore scored in that preseason match, 31 years old. If he can stay healthy, Josie Altidore wants to reclaim his position with the U.S. men's national team. Next up, the late match on Wednesday, Olympia and Club America. 10 p.m. at the Estadio Tiburcio Carrias Andino in Tegucigalpa, Honduras. Second leg, 8 p.m. on April 14th at the Estadio Azteca in Mexico City. Let's start with Olympia, founded in 1912. Los Albos, or Los Leones, the Whites or the Lions. 10-0-4 in the 2020 Apertura. They were first in Group A. They won a semifinal 3-1 over Motagua. That was followed by a 3-0 win over Marathon in the final 32nd league title for Los Albos. They qualified via a semifinal appearance in the 2020 CONCACAF League. 6-0 win in the round of 16 over Managua of Nicaragua. 2-0 win over Motagua in the quarterfinal. That's what booked their spot. They lost on penalties to Alahualense after a scoreless draw in the semifinal. Two-time winners of the CONCACAF Champions Cup, 1972 and 1988. They were runners-up in 1985 and 2000. Last year was a great run for Olympia. They got to the semifinals. They lost to eventual champions Tigres 3-0. They upset the Seattle Sounders on penalties. 4-4 on aggregate in the round of 16. Olympia won the penalty shootout in Seattle to advance. They defeated Montreal in away goals after a 2-2 aggregate in the quarterfinals. They are currently 5-1-1 in Group B of the 2021 Liga Salva Vida Clausura. They just suffered their first loss in league play since March 14, 2020, the last match they played before the pandemic. They bounced back on Saturday night, though, with a 3-1 win over Real Sociedad. 
goals from Jose Pinto and Michael Chirinos, plus an own goal sealed the win. Key players for Los Albos. Chirinos, a 25-year-old Honduran right winger, has eight goals on the season. Up front, they've got a lot of different options. Jerry Bingston was a big part of their CONCACAF Champions League run last year. 33 years old from Honduras. He's got 14 goals in all competitions this year. Eddie Hernandez, 30 years old, Honduran forward, 10 goals in all competitions. Justin Arboleda, a 29-year-old Colombian, has nine goals in all competitions. Ezequiel Aguirre, a 29-year-old Argentine midfielder, He's only played six matches since joining in February from Defensores in Argentina, but he's a player to keep an eye on. Maidron Flores, a 24-year-old under in de- defensive midfielder, 10 yellows in 27 starts in all competitions. And the goalkeeper, 28 years old from Honduras, Edric Menjivar. He's played consistently in all competitions. Club America, founded in 1916, Las Aguilas, 9-3-5 and five in the 2020 Apertura. It was third place in the regular season. It was a bad December for Club America. Disappointing loss to Chivas in the first round of the Liguilla, 3-1 on aggregate. That was followed by two losses in CONCACAF Champions League. They lost the second league leg of the quarterfinal to Atlanta United. 1-0, they had a 3-0 win in the first leg pre-pandemic. That saw them through. They were eliminated by LAFC in the semifinal. That cost Miguel Herrera his job. He's been replaced by Santiago Solari. It's been really good for Solari so far. We'll get into that in a second. They qualified for the 21 CONCACAF Champions League by being the 2019 Apertura runners-up. Seven CONCACAF Champions League titles. 2015 and 16, that campaign, they won it. 2014-15, 2014-15, 2014-15, 2014 15, 2006, 1992, 1990, 1987, and 1977. We mentioned their run last year, at least how it ended. It started needing penalties to get by Comunicaciones of Guatemala. 2 2 on aggregate. They won the penalty shootout at the Estadio Azteca. They won that first leg against Atlanta on March 11th, 3 0, and then it went downhill after the pandemic. Against Honduran teams, Club America has had a good bit of success. 1-0-1 against Motagua in 2015. The last time they played Olympia was in 1990 in the semifinal. The games were two days apart in California in November of 1990. Club America won the first leg 3-0. They lost the second leg 2-1. They advanced on to the final and ended up winning the title in 1990. Current Clausura season. 10-2-1. 10-2-1. and one. They're in second place behind Cruz Azul by two points. They've won six in a row in league play. Their most recent loss was due to an administrative issue. It was a, an issue with their lineup sheet that had a player on it, or a player that was not on it that was supposed to be on it, and they weren't able to solve that issue before the game started, and it was ruled a 3-0 forfeit. If that had remained a win... It would be nine wins in a row right now. Cruz Azul with 11 wins in a row. America should have nine, but they didn't fill out their paperwork properly. They won on Saturday night against Necaxa 2-1. Goals from Richard Sanchez and Giovanni Dos Santos. Other players to keep an eye on, of course, in goal, Memo Ochoa, 35-year-old Mexican legend. Five clean sheets in 10 matches. Emmanuel Aguilera, center back, 31 years old from Argentina. He's got one goal on the year. 85% passer out of the back. Hits the long ball very well. He's been a part of those five clean sheets. And he also, 2.5 interceptions per game. It's a large number for a center back. Often you see him paired with Sebastian Caceres, a 21-year-old Uruguayan. He's got an assist. 1.3 interceptions per game. 1.6 tackles per game. He's been a part of six clean sheets. And he wins 63% of his duels. Midfielders, Richard Sanchez. 25 years old from Paraguay. Two goals, three assists, 1.8 chances created per game. Also, Pedro Aquino, 25 years old from Peru. Two goals, two assists, 91% passing. Five duels, one per game. 1.1 interceptions, 1.8 tackles per game. On the wing, Sebastian Cordova, 23 years old from Mexico. Two goals, one assist. He creates a couple of chances per game. 1.6 successful dribbles per game as well. 
And up front, Henry Martin, 28 years old from Mexico, six goals and one assist in the current campaign. Let's move on to Thursday's games. Real Esteli and the Columbus Crew. Thursday, 8 o'clock at the Estadio Nacional in Managua, Nicaragua. Second leg, April 15th, 8 p.m. at Historic Crew Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. No sponsor name anymore. This could be the last CONCACAF Champions League match ever played there if the crew can't get past Real Esteli. El Tren del Norte, the train of the north, founded in 1961. They've got 18 national titles in Nicaragua, the second most in soccer history in the country. They won eight straight league titles from 2006 to 2014. That's a CONCACAF record. 2019-20 season, they were 8-6-4 and four in the Apertura for third, but they won the playoffs, won the final. They were 10-3-5 and five in the Clausura for third place, but they won the playoffs and won the final. I guess Real Esteli is the Seattle Sounders of the Nicaraguan League. They qualified for the 2021 CCL by beating Motagua in the play-in round of the CONCACAF League. They won that in Tegucigalpa, Honduras, on December 9th. 2-2, Fernando Mercado equalized for Real Esteli in the 90th minute to send it to penalties. It's a play that you guys have seen. We've talked about it on SDH where you had a goalkeeper trying to run out the clock. Uh, failed miserably and conceded a goal in the 90th. He goes to penalties. Real Esteli, perfect 4-4. Four for four. Motagua failed to convert their last two. And Real Esteli is into the CONCACAF Champions League. This is their sixth appearance in the CCL. They had only previously reached the preliminary round or the group stage. Last time they were in the tournament was the 2016-17 edition. Group stage, they went 0-2-2. 0-6-4 lifetime against MLS competition in CCL play. They have a draw against Dallas from 2016. They have a draw against Kansas City in 2014. They have a draw against Kansas City in 2013. And a draw against Montreal in 2008, actually before they were in. MLS. So that doesn't even necessarily count here. We're going to include it for now because they became part of the MLS family. 2020 Apertura. Real Esteli won their fourth straight domestic trophy. They won the final on December 20th. Currently in the Clausura, they're 12 games in, 7 3 and 2, fourth place in the table. But only 2 2 and 2 in their last six league matches. They come into this after a loss versus. Real Madrid, 1-0 on March 31st. Key players to watch for Real Esteli. We'll start from the front. Nico Cata, a 28-year-old who is an international for Equatorial Guinea. Six matches. He was signed in January. Played in the second and third divisions in Spain, as well as a little bit of time with Delphine in Ecuador. Also up front, Brandon Ayerdiz, a 26-year-old Nicaraguan. Six goals in all competitions. Midfielder Juan Barrera, a 31-year-old Nicaraguan, 16 goals in all competitions. He spent some time in Austria and Colombia in the top flight. Also in the midfield, Richard Rodriguez, a 28-year-old Uruguayan. Four goals, started his career at Rentistas in Uruguay. In the back, Josue Quiano, a 30-year-old Nicaraguan, a couple of goals in a lot of matches in all competitions. He is often paired up with Manuel Rosas, a 37-year-old Mexican who has one goal in 29 matches in all competitions. Columbus, one of the originals in Major League Soccer from 1996. They are your defending MLS Cup champions from 2020. 12-6-5 in the regular season, third place in the Eastern Conference. Defeated the New York Red Bulls in the first round of the playoffs, 3-2. Needed extra time to get past Nashville in the conference semifinals 2-0. 1-0 over New England in the Eastern Conference Final. And then demolished the Seattle Sounders 3-0 in the MLS Cup Final in Columbus on December 12th. That MLS Cup title qualified them for the 2021 CCL. Fourth time around in the CONCACAF Champions League or Cup. They also participated in the 2001 CONCACAF Giants Cup just to be thorough with our CONCACAF history here. Columbus has reached the quarterfinals in each of their three previous trips to the CCL. 
10 years, though, since their last appearance. We're going back to the 2010-11 edition of the CONCACAF Champions League. They advanced from the group stage. It was a, a four-team group stage. Four wins, once over Santos Laguna, once over Municipal, two times over Joe Public of Trinidad and Tobago. They were eliminated in the quarterfinals by Real Salt Lake, 4-1 on aggregate. This is the first time Columbus has played a Nicaraguan side in official competition. Columbus lost that friendly we mentioned earlier to Toronto, 4-2 over the weekend. They're not expecting Artur or Vito Warmhor to be available to start in the first leg. Both could see time, but not from the start. They're not 100%, according to manager Caleb Porter. Key players... We'll go back to front for the crew. Goalkeeper Aloy Room, 31 years old. Curacao International came to the fore in the 2019 Gold Cup. Center back Jonathan Mensa, 30 years old from Ghana. Right back Harrison Awful, 34 years old from Ghana. Dangerous when he can get forward. Without our tour, Darlington Nagby becomes very critical at 30 years old from the United States. Big addition for Columbus, wins the title there. He's won MLS Cup in Portland, in Atlanta, and now in Columbus. Lucas Zellerayan, one of the best signings in Major League Soccer in 2020. The 28-year-old Argentine is essential for this team going forward, but they've added firepower in the offseason. Kevin Molino, 30 years old from Trinidad and Tobago, last year with Minnesota United. He'll be paired up on one wing with Pedro Santos, 32 years old from Portugal, on the other. Santos has put back-to-back big seasons up for the crew. And up front, Jossie Zardes, 29 years old, seems to score goals for fun for Columbus. He does have some help this year with Bradley Wright Phillips in reserve, but Jossie Zardes is expected to have a huge year with Molino, with Santos, with Zellerayan. You've got Luis Diaz from Costa Rica off the bench. You've got Awful bombing forward. You've got Nagby. You've got a lot of weapons for this Columbus crew team. They are the best MLS team coming into the 2021 season. They're a big favorite against Real Esteli, but it's been a while since they've been in CONCACAF Champions League competition. And we'll move on to our last one, Atletico Pantoja against Monterrey. Thursday, 10 p.m. at the Estadio Olimpico Felix Sanchez in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. Second leg will be the following Thursday at 10 p.m. from the Estadio BBVA in Monterrey. Atletico Pantoja was founded in 2000. Los Guerreros, the Warriors. They won the 2019 Liga Dominicana Grand Final. That qualified them for the 2020 Caribbean Club Championship. They've got two league titles to their name, one Apertura title to their name, and one Super Cup to their name. In that Caribbean Club Championship in 2020, they won both of their games in the group stage in Kingston, Jamaica. They beat Portmore United. They beat Arkey. The final stage was set to be played in the Dominican Republic in May of 2020. It was postponed due to the pandemic. They tried to reschedule it for the fall, but eventually it was canceled and Atletico Pantoja was awarded the 2021 CCL berth from the competition because they were the best team in the group stage matches. Nobody else won both of their group stage matches. This is their second time in the CONCACAF Champions League. The first was in 2019. It's the third time overall that a club from the Dominican Republic has qualified for the CCL. In 2019, they lost in the round of 16, 5-0 on aggregate to the New York Red Bulls. They've never played a Mexican club in official competition before. They do have one CONCACAF title to their name. In 2018, they won that CONCACAF Caribbean Club Championship. The last matches that they have played, you're going back to the fall of 2020. They went 1-4-1 in league matches held then. It appears that the last match they have played in official competition is November 7th of 2020, a 2-0 loss to Universidad Organización y Metodos. From local media reports in recent weeks, they, they have put a team together. They have had an extensive training camp. They've probably had some closed-door friendlies. Ramsey Santana, the club sports director, said that 
They were able to bring 11 players back from last year's squad. They've signed 10 new players, and they did present a new coaching staff, and they're getting ready to start the 2021 campaign. Their first competitive games will be these two with Monterrey. So players to watch, your guess is as good as mine here. Uh, Bad news, though, is Eric Japa, a young player that they have signed, is injured. He has a metatarsal break, and he'll be out for six to eight weeks. Uh, Matias Masmud is the new manager. Um, he is from Delfines del Este, and he has his full coaching staff ready to go. And Atletico Pantoja will have a really tough time dealing with a strong club, one of the heavyweights in CONCACAF, Monterrey. They were founded in 1945. Los Rayados were 8-4-5 in the Apertura season, finishing fifth in the league. They were eliminated in the play-in round by Puebla on penalties. They qualified for the 2021 CCL by winning the 2019 Apertura, the fall season of 2019. They're four-time winners of the CONCACAF Champions League, three straight, 2011, 2012, 2013. They won it again in 2019. That was the last time they were in the tournament. It was a 1-0 aggregate win narrowly over Alianza of El Salvador in the round of 16, 3-1 over Atlanta United in the quarterfinals, 10-2 10-2 over Sporting Kansas City in the semis, and then they beat Tigres 2-1 on aggregate in the 2019 final. They've never played a team from the Dominican Republic in competition. Javier Aguirre is now in charge at Monterrey. They are 6-2-4 and four in the current Clausura season, third in the table. They beat Atletico San Luis on Saturday 2-0, goals from Maxi Mesa and Rogelio Funes Mori. One loss in their last seven in league play, and that was to the leaders, Cruz Azul. Let's start with Maxi Mesa. Feels like he's starting to come good for Monterrey after a slow start to his career in Mexico after coming over from Independiente in Argentina. Three goals, two assists. He's winning 5.9 duels per match, 1.8 chances created per match. Rogelio Funes Mori, nine goals. In 10 games this season for Monterrey, one assist. He's creating chances as well. 1.3 key passes per game for Funes Mori. Midfielder Arturo Gonzalez, a 26-year-old Mexican, has a goal, two assists, 1.6 chances created per game. He's also winning 1.6 tackles per game. Center back Cesar Montes, 24 years old from Mexico, 1.1 interceptions per game, 1.4 tackles per game. 72% of his duels won. He's often paired with Nicolas Sanchez, the veteran Argentine center back who hasn't played all of the games in the current season. Are you saving him for CONCACAF Champions League where he was immense in 2019? We'll have to see how they handle it. Maybe they ease him in with a manageable round of 16 series here with Atletico Pantoja. Left back Jesus Gallardo, 26 years old from Mexico, 1.7 interceptions per game, three tackles per game, seven duels won per game. This is a very combative team under Javier Aguirre. Goalkeeper is a new one for Monterrey since last time we saw them in this competition. Hugo Gonzalez, a 30-year-old Mexican, four clean sheets in 11 matches. And that's the round of 16. Eight matchups. It starts on Tuesday, 6 o'clock. We will have a bunch of watch-alongs on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash soccer down here. We'll have extensive coverage around Atlanta and Alawalense starting on Monday show. We will also have a recap of the first legs late in the week, and we'll kind of Start from what we saw in these games. We know a few players to watch now. We know the histories. Who has the best chance to be a surprise in the first leg? Who will be a disappointment in the first leg? What player will emerge with a huge performance in the first leg? We'll come back at the end of the week and give you that information as we get ready for the second legs next week. CONCACAF Champions League, it's one of my favorite things every year, and I'm so glad that we are getting... 2021 officially started, at least for MLS teams, with it this week. Thanks for listening. Please, if you have any questions about CCL, throw them our way on Twitter. I'm at Longshoe or at Soccer Down Here. We'll talk about them on the shows this week. 
Thanks for being part of the SDH universe. We'll be talking to you in the mornings all week long about CONCACAF Champions League. Thank you.